The primary method we're going to have for solving quadratic equations is called the quadratic formula. Now, uh, the quadratic formula is a general case. So ax squared plus bx plus c, a, b, and c are just numbers. In this case, 1, 1, negative 6, down here, 3, 2, and 5. They just represent some sort of coefficient, some sort of numbers. And if I rearrange these terms, it would not rearrange what a, b, and c are. Okay. The terms do not have to be written in that specific order for those to be there. a is the number in front of the x squared, b is the number in front of the x, and c is the number that's by itself. So whatever the order is, not a big deal. Okay, And it has to equal 0. Once again, to solve a quadratic, it always has to equal 0. And then here's your equation. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. That's a long equation. But in some, some methods, uh, this, is, this is much faster. Much faster than completing the square. So let's go ahead and use it. Here I have an equation. x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. So first I'm going to identify my a, b, and c. ax squared, so a is 1, 1x squared. bx, 1x. c is negative 6. And so I'm just going to plug it here into the formula. x equals negative b, so minus 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4, times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 6, all over 2a, and a is 1, so that's 2. So now I just need to do the simplification of all this. Negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 4 times 1, sorry, negative 4 times 1 times negative 6 is positive 24, and if I add that to 1, that's 25 all over 2. Now I'm still simplifying. Square root of 25 is 5 minus 1 plus or minus 5 over 2. And once again, still simplifying because now I got to do the plus 5 and I got to do the minus 5. Negative 1 plus 5 is 4. 4 over 2 is 2. So there's one answer. Negative 1 minus 5 is negative 6, over 2 is negative 3, there's my other answer. And so there you go, using the quadratic formula to solve a problem. Now, we could have actually used an easier method. This method of factoring that I'm about to show you works on some, but not on all. So you're welcome to use it whenever you, whenever you want, whenever you can, but it doesn't work on everything. Again, factoring would say, what multiplies negative 6 multiplies to C and adds to B. This method only applies when A is 1. A is 1, so what multiplies to negative 6 and adds to 1? And hopefully you can see that those two numbers, positive 3 and negative 2, Negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. And you can also see if x plus 3 is 0, x is negative 3. And if x minus 2 is 0, x is 2. So that's another way you can solve this problem. Okay, I want you to go ahead and try this one. This one's a little more complicated. It's not going to simplify the same way. And remember that when you have a negative in the square root, that means that there's an I in that answer. But there's an I that's going to come out of that square root. So go ahead and give it a try. So hopefully you got negative 1 plus or minus I root 14 is your answer. Now if you, if you didn't, I wouldn't worry about it too much. You may have gotten negative 2 plus or minus I root 56 over 2 or something like that and haven't pulled out the square root of 4 out of here. Uh, if you don't remember how to simplify square roots, go ahead and ask in class. We'll go over that then. Uh, but what I want you to see here in both of these, as I was writing out the problem, I got to a step that looked like this. And underneath the square root here, I got 25. And underneath the square root here, I got negative 56. And that number is called the discriminant. And 
and it determines, it determines what kind of answers you have. And if the discriminant is positive, you have two real answers. They're real numbers. Negative three and two are my answers here. Even if I couldn't take the square root of that, say it was the square root of 17 or something, I still would have two real answers. They would be decimals, they would have involved square roots, but they'd be real, they'd exist, they wouldn't be anything imaginary. Because I could take the square root of positive. Now, if your discriminant is negative, as in this case, you're going to have two complex answers, or possibly two imaginary answers. Complex mean, meaning that it has an imaginary and real component. Here's the real, there's the imaginary. And it has two. Plus or minus is two. So there's, those are two of the options that you can have for your answer in a quadratic. Two reals, so you're never going to have an answer of three i and four because complex always come in pairs. Or you can have two reals in pairs, you're not gonna have a real and an imaginary, uh, two, separate, two of those kind of answers. And there's one other case that's not represented here. This is where the discriminant's positive, this is where it's negative, and where those meet is at zero, and at zero you have a different case because the square root of zero is zero. And if I do plus or minus, the square root of zero, whether I add or subtract, that's the same. Adding zero, subtracting zero, that's the same. So really, I don't need the plus or minus at all. There's only going to be one answer. Just one answer. And uh, in that case, I'm only going to have one real. It's not going to be imaginary. One real answer. So your discriminant will tell you whether your answers are real or imaginary by whether you have a negative, negative would be imaginary, zero and positive would be real, and how many there are. You have one, if it's zero, and if it's not zero, you have two. Mm -hmm.